far, far away in Lapland, known to some as Lala Land, with a hey and a ho and a fa la 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 la, lived a woman all on her own. As a young girl, she had lost her family, and ever since she had looked after herself and been on her own. Well, not entirely on her own, as all living beings around her had become her friends, so she never felt alone. She had no idea whether she was missing out on anything, or whether she was missed by anyone. She had no idea how old she was either, and since no one was there to point anything out or tell her what one ought to do at specific times or at a certain age, she tuned into what felt natural to her, and gradually simply became. She would talk to the trees, share her food with a snow fox, sing with the birds, and hang out with some sweet reindeers who would walk about not far from her yurt in the forest. The reindeers were particularly good company. They would make her laugh as they told funny stories about what they had seen further away. They were always light-spirited and often asked her to jump on their back and then she could fly along and see for herself. No, she was happy to listen to their stories, which already were so far out, full of joy and wilder than her own imagination. But she had no real desire or urge to experience them herself. Some might have called her poor, as she had few belongings. Some would call her powerless, as she had no electricity. Some would say she had no roof. Really, there was a roof, it just had a hole in it, a smoke hole. So every evening she could light a fire in the middle of the yurt and cook for herself. What would she cook? Well, she would cook whatever she had found on her walks in the surrounding woods. Often she would find so much she would have enough to dry and keep it in storage for the days where she didn't find anything. And then she would sing to herself, mend her red and white dotted dress or knit another scarf for one of the reindeers, build another shelter for a bird. There was always something to do, something to be done and it never felt like hard work. One night she had a strange dream. She dreamt she was wandering into the wilderness and that someone was calling and she couldn't figure out what they were calling. Was it her name? It was such a long time since anyone had called her by her name that she couldn't quite figure it out. She woke up and didn't know what to make of it. A few nights later, she once again heard someone calling a name, hers. It was definitely her name. Kusama. This time, she seemed to see the outlines of a human. Inside, a big, mysterious question mark grew and grew. Who? What? Why? Was it perhaps her soul calling out for a soul mate? Days passed by, and the calling, singing, or all ringing in her head, kept her occupied till she decided to tell the trees. The snow fox? The reindeers? Well, she couldn't quite work out what the meaning of the dream was. Nobody seemed to be able to give her the answer she was looking for, and it made her wonder even more. Late one winter evening, when she was just about to fall asleep, someone made a noise outside the yurt. She sat up, awake. She thought it must be an animal that needed help and tried to go outside to help it, but she discovered it had snowed so much there really was no way she could even get out of the door. So she called out, Ooh! If you need my help, come down the smoke hole in the roof. The fire has almost gone out, so you won't burn yourself. I'll try to catch you. Then some clumsy, humpty dumpty breathing, and just a few minutes later, down the smoke hole, a greenish lump of moss fell with big friendly eyes. And as the snow quickly melted, she discovered a slightly wet behind the ears. Man! Oh! she exclaimed. Oh! ho! ho he exclaimed. Are you the one who's been calling out for me? My meaning of life? That's a good question. I have no idea. I'm not sure I could answer that anyway. I believe you are the answer to that yourself. Did you visit me in my dreams? Ah, yes, I did try to do that, but no one ever answered. So I went out on an adventure, got lost, started seeking for my good fortune, and I dare say I may have found it. She smiled. I'm glad I found you, Kusama. I'm Chris. <laughs> well, Chris, full of moss, 
I'm glad you found me. From the roof to her very roots in this yurt, there certainly seemed to be some kind of dotty magic going on. She in her Amanita Muscaria outfit, he with his mossy beard full of mystical mistletoe, and yes, a bit of a mess, and a song seemed to start playing in her head, you better shape up. Cause I need a man, and my heart is set on you. So he shaped up, cleaned up, and she made him an outfit so he could fit into everything that was already around him. And then they started sharing the space around the fire, their meals, their walks, their findings. And one day took the other. How many is hard to tell as happy times pass by so quickly. And no one was there to measure or to tell them that their happy days were sure to have run out. So they just continued being ever so merry. One day, just after winter solstice, the reindeers told them a story about some beings that looked a bit like them, but not quite like them, who weren't so merry. No, 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 not so merry at all. Ooh, they were struggling about everything and they seemed to long for something. I don't know, a story, a fire to sit by. Well, they can always come up here, can't they? We will make room for them. Oh, you have no idea how many unhappy ones there are, especially the smaller ones. They no longer feel any joy. Oh, what can we do to help them? Well, once one has heard of someone being unhappy, there is only one thing to do, said Mama Kusama. What's that? Chris Moss asked. Well, I, I think it's very clear that we need to share our happiness with them and give them some kind of sprinkling of joy. I, I know, the joy of presence. When you're present, you're never unhappy. Oh, you are so very clever, Mama Kusama. Yes, why don't you fly off with reindeer Amanita and Muscarius and take some presents to these unhappy ones? Just drop some of it, uh, some magic and some joy into their smoke holes. What a wonderful idea. But do make sure you're back here before the sun has set three times. Then I will prepare a feast for us and we will sing and dance and be merrier than we have ever been, knowing we have shared our happiness. And that is exactly what happened. And as far as I know, that's exactly what they do year after year. Although Mama Kusama and Father Christmas may not even know exactly what a year is or notice the time fly by. But then the reindeers remind them, soon after winter solstice, that it's time once again to sprinkle presents into everyone's lives. And so to this day, even right now, as far as I know, they're still at it.